It was an attractive morning, and as daily antics carried on in camp, I thought it'd be best to briefly go through Madagascar's geography before heading off into the forest. Okay, so here is a map of the entirety of Madagascar. Lots of people I've spoken to in the UK, well, their knowledge is only really based off the animated film. Lots of people rush to assume that the whole island is actually covered in tropical rainforest. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. There is actually an extensive mountainous spine that runs all the way from the south to the north along the east coast of Madagascar. This blocks all the tropical trade winds coming from Asia, creating extensive rainforests all the way along this coast. However, on this side of the island, the west and the south, it is mostly dry and very arid. This is where you see ecosystems such as dry forests and also spiny forests. So Madagascar is actually much more drier and has much less rainforest than most people think. However, we are on the east coast and the rainforest is just on our doorstep. So over the next few days before I start the intensive conservation work, we'll be exploring those rainforests. So I packed up my bag and headed off into the forest. St. Luce is home to various species of mammals, birds and reptiles. However, they're not necessarily the easiest to find. Okay, so I've been going for about whoop, half an hour now and it is really hot. We haven't seen anything yet, but God, this heat is definitely not what I'm used to in the UK. <laughs> Nevertheless, I carried on and I soon came across one of Madagascar's most famous inhabitants. Okay, so we finally found our first lemur. Um, it is a collared brown lemur, which is a critically endangered species. It's quite abundant here in St. Luce, and it's one of the animals that they're trying here so desperately to protect. Lemurs are an ancient group of primates and can only be found on the island of Madagascar. They have been left to evolve independently for up to 40 million years. Most of the troop's members were actually fast asleep. However, one male was left on guard acting as a sentry, looking out for any potential predators. But my presence had already woken up most of the troop at this point. They continued to resume their daily routine, which largely included play fighting with the youngsters, as well as grooming each other and maintaining bonds. Now fully awake, the troop began to head higher up into the canopy in order to start foraging. Their primary food consisted of leaves of various different species of tree as well as fruits. The sentry tries to carry on doing its job, however one of the troop's playful youngsters is being annoyingly persistent. Another individual managed to spot this Malagasy buzzard perched in one of the emergents, and it is one of their main predators. This sends the lemurs into a state of panic as they rapidly start grunting in order to communicate with the rest of the troop. With the threat now recognised, the troop starts scurrying through the canopy in order to advert the danger. But for me, this meant that they were soon out of sight and too high to observe. Evening was now setting on the forest, and on the way back to camp, I bumped into one of St. Lucy's most colourful inhabitants on the path. So, in the undergrowth in front of me, there is a pair of giant kua. So they're just foraging on the floor, which is generally what they do for most of their time. Kuas are a chicken-sized bird that prefer to spend most of their time on the ground and are a member of the cuckoo family. They have a voracious appetite, from eating seeds to snakes and chameleons. Kuas are another one of Madagascar's endemic inhabitants and this giant kua is the largest species of the family. Whilst this one was foraging on the ground, its partner was nervously sitting up in the tree, constantly making its croaky call to ensure that they don't lose sight of each other since my presence was somewhat affecting their daily routine. So at this point, I decided to leave them alone and call it a day. The next few days inevitably got busier, however that didn't stop me from meeting another one of Madagascar's most iconic inhabitants. 
Okay, so Madagascar is an absolute haven for reptile lovers, and for one reptile in particular, chameleons. So chameleons are superbly adapted for arboreal life. Unlike most lizards, which tend to have their legs coming outwards, these guys have their legs centered underneath their body, which aids a lot in terms of their balance and being able to climb trees. Chameleons have the ability to move their eyes independently, as well as their toes being fused together in order to help them grasp twigs and branches. This larger juvenile warty chameleon found on the side of the path was making its way up to the canopy. Chameleons hate drawing attention to themselves and will move slowly and subtly in order to not be seen. With one eye focused on me and the other focused on a twig, it soon made its way into thick cover, out of sight. But this was to be one of many encounters. Seeing these animals during the day was absolutely thrilling. However, now it was time to wait until night, where more animals emerge from the forest. Stay tuned for more.